Welcome back, everyone. Uh, a short inscription for Hamla, as we said, he's a wizard from Terminal. <laughs> and now he's going to prove to us. <laughs> no, 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 no pressure. No, 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 no pressure. But we look forward to hearing uh, what you think. So, uh, welcome and applause. <laughs> So, um, welcome to Just Code It. Uh, as he said, I like Terminal, so of course my slides are in the Terminal. That goes without saying. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Just Code It. And maybe you think uh, of this guy as plagiar uh, is plagiarizing, but if you look closely, it's in fact a lambda. <laughs> a tail of lambda, so it's programming related. It's, it's not lucky. <laughs> So uh, today we're going to quickly uh, introduce myself, uh, I'm going to talk about the objectives of this talk, then I'm going to try and motivate you to find some coding inspiration, and then we're going to make a project together. So I'm Hamza, uh, I've been at CodeStar for about four years now, since we created it. Uh, I really like coding the quirky stuff, uh, I like to experiment with a lot of things, and uh, I like terminals. I made a talk about terminal quirkiness at DevOps. You can look it up on, on YouTube. Uh, so uh, what are the objectives for today? Um, as I said, we want to find some coding inspiration. We're going to make a Python project from scratch. Um, I'm going to go into some Python code. That's not the, the goal of, of what I'm talking about. But it, it can illustrate it. And it's also a nice overview over some new modern Python libraries. I'm going to try to have some fun and learn some things, and at the end, I'm going to do a demo with stuff on this table. Uh, how did this come to be? How did this come to be is basically the goal of this talk. How do I find inspiration to do all my projects? Uh, for this one, for example, I just was watching a, a random video on YouTube from Byheart. She's a YouTuber who talks about mathematics, uh, quirky mathematics, she's a bit crazy. Um, it's very interesting and one day she made a video where she had this music box and she made her own music and then she started uh, playing it backwards, flipping it, reverse, cutting it and repuzzling it together to see what happens and talking about the, the mathematical transformations she was doing. And I thought this was pretty cool so of course I immediately went on uh, the internet and bought myself a music box to try and experiment. And then what happened is that I spent hours uh, taking existing music and trying to transpose it to make it fit on, on this box. And after spending a few hours, it was really tedious, I thought, what's the obvious thing to do? Just code it. <laughs> uh, so we're going to make a tool that uh, takes some MIDI files and produces um, blueprints for uh, these punch cards automatically for you, regardless of, of the, the, the music. And along the way, we'll learn a bit about uh, the music block itself, a uh, tiny bit of music theory, uh, how the MIDI format works loosely, um, some um, Python package management stuff, virtual environments, how to make a command line interface, and a bit of drawing. So what made me do this talk? Uh, when I like to do a lot of small projects, and I like to show them to my colleagues, and they always say, um, I don't have time. Where do you find time to do this? That's not what we're going to talk about. But they also say, uh, where do you find those ideas? I never find any ideas. So my, my advice to you is you don't need original ideas. It's, you just need to look around you and uh, whenever you see something you find interesting or even normal things like how does a screen work? How does a video signal work? Just code it. <laughs> don't think more. And uh, now I'm just going to show you a few examples of uh, these ideas that you, you could pick up. Again, I found these ideas, no shame in doing it yourself. <laughs> so whenever you think, wow, <laughs> ray tracing, this, it looks amazing, how do they do it? Just code it. <laughs> you, you will learn some, some mathematics, how to handle parallel workloads, uh, a lot about physics, like um, global illumination, translucency, all that stuff. Uh, and you'll come out with more knowledge. Uh, uh, this font looks nice, um, but what, how, uh, now that I think about it, how do fonts even work? Just code it. Go on Wikipedia, learn the font standards. Um, you will learn a lot about procedural generation, like 
This font I'm using right now in the terminal is called Yosefka. It's an open source font entirely made from coding. So you can go on GitHub, pull the repo, and choose whatever symbols you want. You have a lot of variations and compile it and you have a font. That, that, I think that's awesome. So there's a lot to learn here. Maybe you think, hey, this chatbot on Discord is, is fun. How do I make one? Just code it. Uh, you learn uh, how to handle async APIs. Uh, you learn how to interact with users. And um, if you want to host your bot on Amazon, uh, you will learn about cloud hosting. You're using an ID every day. Do you know how the plugins are made? You can do your own. You'll learn a lot about AST trees, uh, user interfaces, UX. Uh, you don't need an original plugin idea. Just pick one that already exists and try to implement it yourself. Uh, this programming language looks fun, maybe not useful, <laughs> but fun. But how do you even make a language? Just code it. Uh, there's a lot to learn about grammar, language design. It can sound complicated at first, but after you do it, you'll have a better appreciation for the compiler you're using every day, and maybe you'll even be able to optimize stuff more. Just code <laughs> it. <laughs> more ideas. Fractals look amazing. Just code it. There's some math, more parallel stuff, recursion. Emulators are amazing. How do they work? How is it possible? Just code it. <laughs> Just code it. <laughs> uh, drones. You, maybe you can't fly a drone. It's a bit hard. But there's some drones out there that have public APIs. You can just install a library and control your drone from your code. Uh, who, who likes LaTeX? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> how does it work? It's magic, but you can also learn how to do typesettings. It's really interesting. Uh, I didn't know you could make terminal animations. How does it work? Just code it. What will you learn? Not a lot. But you <laughs> so you, you don't need original ideas to, to code fun things. You, you just pick something that already exists and you will learn a lot. Uh, yes, so it, it, the, the, I think w w one nice aspect about this is that it will give you a new appreciation for stuff you're using every day. Maybe you're using a CLI tool e every day, you never made one, and y you'll know how it works. And uh, a nice trick about uh, picking up these projects is try to not reuse always the same libraries you're used to. Uh, for the same things, sometimes you have maybe five or ten libraries. Try to rotate, try something else, and maybe you'll discover something great, even though you thought your usual libraries were great. Uh, where can you find this kind of inspiration? Well, uh, the internet is very vast, and um, there's a lot to find there. And uh, what, what I commonly see around me is that people uh, go on the internet with already a goal, like, I want to learn stream processing, I want to learn this thing. And they will find a lesson or a course or a tutorial for this specific subject. And that's too focused. You will just only learn this thing. You maybe won't make a project out of it. And I think it's a lost opportunity. So I, I think it's more about finding ideas than having a specific goal to learn the technology. You can find some inspiration on Reddit. Uh, I find that the Python subreddit is very uh, beginner uh, friendly. So a lot of people who just begin will post their projects there and get a lot of feedback. But these projects they post are already great ideas. I will show it later. And of course, it's Reddit. So some subreddits are not as friendly. Uh, pick wisely. <laughs> So uh, I just randomly went on the top for the month on Reddit, and I found all these interesting things. This, this is um, Starry Night, but rendered uh, using Turtle. So it's that tutorial module you, you use to learn basic programming. He took it to such lengths and reproduced the painting. And even though it doesn't look that amazing, I think it's great inspiration to try some stuff yourself. This guy uh, was inspired by the Animoji from Apple. They recently released it. And he used OpenCV to detect faces and then just draw basic lines on it. And I think it's quite fun. It looks like a Nintendo DS game. <laughs> this is a double pendulum. Uh, this was made by, uh, with processing. Uh, Alex mentioned it. It's like a live environment for uh, visual coding. You can start drawing things and it will refresh live. 
So he made this double pendulum, it's from chaos theory, a tiny changing input can produce a radically different uh, output. So yes, and this guy uh, made the ASCII art webcam. It's just fun, but it will teach you how to uh, take a video stream and do some processing on it. Don't do that every day. Uh, this is a project where someone was listening to music on YouTube, on playlists, but that was his only browser use. He didn't want to run a whole browser just for music. So he made a command line tool that takes a YouTube playlist, downloads the, the music and plays it on his terminal. This is a 3D uh, uh, engine made from scratch in Python. Also a lot of interesting things to learn there. So if you found any of these remotely interesting, fun, impressive, just code it. <laughs> Don't think, hey, I wish I ha was creative enough to find a nice idea like that. Instead, take that idea. <laughs> so you can also find inspiration on YouTube. Uh, here's a few channels I recommend. This is the coding train. He uh, takes challenges from his audience and makes them in processing. And uh, every time he will also teach you how he does it. So he will pop up Wikipedia, show you theory on the whiteboard, do some diagrams. And the nice thing about uh, his uh, challenges is that at the end he has a basic solution and he will give you 10 ideas on how to improve on this project. And, and that's a starting point for many things. A number file slash computer file, maybe some of you know this already. It's uh, about mathematics. They go to universities and interview some professors about uh, various topics. And many of these are very implementable in code. It looks like something you should code. And I tried a few of these. It's been quite fun. This is one lone coder. He does a lot uh, of gaming programming. Uh, here he made an emulator from scratch. He also does like 3D engine, stuff like that, without libraries. So you will really learn a lot about uh, matrix transformations, polygons, low-level stuff. This is a bit similar, Handmade Hero, it's a veteran from the gaming industry, started a Kickstarter where he uh, makes a, project, a game from scratch at the professional level, but without any libraries, he made all the libraries himself. Very interesting stuff. Code Parade, it's more oriented towards machine learning, so he will make faces from scratch, not only humans, it's very funny. Uh, Alex McLean, <laughs> as you saw earlier, uh, uh, if you were inspired by what he did, try it at home. Don't, don't hesitate. Back to the topic at hand. So um, I thought music boxes were fun, so we're going to just code it together. We'll learn uh, about uh, Python projects, MIDI, music theory, all that jazz. Disclaimer, I'm not saying that the way I do this project is the best way, it's just one way that I found and I experimented with new libraries and uh, it was fun. So how do you make a Python project? Usually there are vanilla ways to have a setup.py file where you configure a project, it's code <coughs> as configuration, it's a bit messy and uh, you define your requirements in the text file with which will just use your local libraries that you installed on your system, so you could have version clashes. So people try to com uh, make that better with virtual environments. So you have a separate runtime of Python with its separate libraries that you install, and you can run your project isolated from your system. But that's still a bit cumbersome. So you have two alternatives, <laughs> which are quite recent. So I wanted to try them out. There's pipen, which has its own standard file, uh, all non-standard file called pip file. Which you, but you still need the setup.py, and if you do a, a project with setup.py, it's not self-sufficient. You also need the manifest.in, or requirements.txt, uh, not for pip, and uh, setup.cfg. It's, it's quite messy. So uh, for this project, that was the first time I tried poetry, which um, removes all that hassle and uses a new standard that was recently accepted uh, for a new config file, and it's a real config file, not some weird code. So um, yeah, it's really great for dependency management. Uh, it will create a, an environment, a virtual environment for you. It also does publishing. Uh, all the other uh, methods you have to do manual publishing. With this one, you just type poetry publish and your project is available for people to install. 
So it was really great. So let's start a project. So I have here a repository. So okay. So we have an empty folder. We're gonna try poetry in it, and it's, it tries to really make it simple for you. It will prompt you what the what's the name of your project, the version description. Offer, license. So you just agree to a bunch of things, and then <laughs> <laughs> it makes a, a config file for you. So it's this um, pipeproject.toml. And uh, that's the only config you need. You don't need five separate files. And when you need to add some dependencies, you will do uh, poetry add. So for example, the MIDI library uh, I need is called Mido. So I just add it. And it, it, the more you, you add dependency, the, the, the dependencies, the more it will check for compatibility between the versions you have. It's much better than just standard pip for that. Uh, now I have this dependency, but uh, if I go to Python and I try import mid, Mido, it says module not found, and that's because I installed this dependency in a in the virtual environment that Poetry created for me. So I need to activate this environment. And now magically I'm in a different Python setup where Mido exists, so if I go back, I can import Mido. And there it is, so, so it's really isolated. And then if I go to the next branch, now I have a pre-configured uh, project that I pre-baked. <laughs> <laughs> so music boxes, how do, do they work? So first off, there's different models. This one is the 30 notes model. I bought it on Grand Illusions. Uh, they have like a 20 note and a 15 note model. And um, the notes that you can play are different between the boxes, so that's one thing to take into account. And in the code that we'll see later, I made the music box class to represent this. That will uh, tell uh, my program what are the notes that are available and has a bunch of helper methods to like, I, I ask it, can it play uh, a C4? It will say no, but the closest note is C3 or whatever it can find. So this is what the bottom of the box looks like. And uh, you have, of course, disconnected. So uh, you have a bunch of pins from uh, really short to long. And when you pinch those pins, it will vibrate and do a note. And the way you program it is that uh, there's like this cylinder here with uh, small pins that will rotate when you crank it. But it, they're too weak to, on their own, pluck those uh, mu musical pins. But when there's a card in inside with a hole, the hole will uh, take the pin together with it and it will then pinch the note. And that's how notes are played. And uh, speaking of notes to play, we need a musical source. Uh, usually when you think about music on computers, you think about MP3, AAC, those kinds of formats, but these are waveforms. So there's no note information. It's all about frequency over time. That's a whole different project you could do, uh, trying to guess notes from a recording like this. In our case, we're gonna make it easier. We're gonna use MIDI, which is more like sheet music. So MIDI stands for a Musical Instrument Digital Interface. Uh, it's a thing that was developed in the 80s, I think. And it was first uh, a protocol for connecting your synthesizers and keyboards together with cables. Uh, they later made the file format where they captured those events and put it in file with headers and stuff. Uh, each, uh, so, so it's event based and each event contains different information. So for example, it says play on this channel with this note at this strength, at this moment in time. So for our project, we're interested in just what notes are played. We don't care about what instrument or the volume. So we're only interested in the event called notes on, note off. So you just go to Wikipedia, you look up the definition and you find, oh, a note on message is made of n bits. Uh, the first four are uh, the byte four. Then you have the event type, which is 1001. It's very low level. So instead, we're going to use a library to parse a MIDI file. And it, just, it will just give us a list of notes, uh, a list of events that we can just iterate over and look at all the notes we're interested in. 
And in the end, the goal is to take those nodes, transpose them, and uh, produce a, a, a blueprint with where to plug the holes or if you can print it. So let's quickly look at uh, a music editor to maybe get a more intuitive idea of what that was meaning. Is there any sound? Yeah. Yay, sound. So uh, this is a piano roll. It's quite similar to uh, the, 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 the punch card, except that notes can be longer. So it starts here, it will hold the note and end here. So um, basically, on the left you have a, pian a piano. So the higher you go, the higher pitched. And on the x-axis is the time axis. So this is a MIDI file from a video game called Chrono Trigger. A very good game, if you try. <laughs> Um, and if I look at this channel, I already prepared uh, some notes, which are the notes that you can physically play on this box. So there's only 30 notes, and some of them aren't here. So I cannot play this uh, D sharp here, and I cannot play this note. So uh, if I take all these notes, and we'll try to make it more visual. So I unzoom, I will drag them the whole distance. I'll come back to my other track. So now you see those notes I stretched, you see them behind uh, tr uh, more transparently. Um, you can see that I can play most of my melody, but for example, this, this note here that is in my melody is not available on my music box. So what can you try to do to uh, improve that? You can take all the notes and move them up or down. This is called transposition. And if you try hard enough, you might find a transposition where you can play all your notes, or most of them. So that's what the program is going to try to do. And here I, I lowered all the notes, and it still sounds like the same melody, it's just lower pitched. Which, for playing on the music box, you don't really care if it's the original pitch or not, as long as it sounds like the original melody. So, we're done here. Don't see. <coughs> Um, yeah, so let's set up our basic project. So if I go to the next branch. Of course. Sorry for that. Oh. Huh. <laughs> All right. Let's go to the next branch. No? <laughs> you wrote the uh, stash with double A. Stash fill. Yeah. Stash fill? Stash fill. Will it fail? No, no, no. no. <laughs> I'll just remove those ones. It worked before. Okay. So now we have a bit more files. We have. Uh, Maybe I should open the editor. Why did you open it here? <laughs> so uh, we have a package called Falcon, and there's a main class in there that just prints hello. And if we go to Alright. Now we have even more files. Uh, we have a font, we have uh, Falcon with Pi and stuff. So let's see. Um, maybe increase the font. Sorry. So uh, in our main file now, we were already doing some stuff. So um, let's see. I added this music box class I talked about earlier. It has um, a list of notes and also a list of labels because the sheet they give you are lying. They say this is a C, a C zero, but in fact it's a F. So they pretend to be in C major. So I have a separate list where I put what's actually written on the sheet and another list where uh, it's the real notes. So here notes are represented with just hints, uh, similarly to what we saw earlier. Uh, the higher you go, the higher pitch. And I have uh, some helper functions, including this distance function, which will be like the most important thing. It will, um, if, if the note is available on, on, on the box you chose, it will return zero, because you can play that note. And uh, the further away you have to go to play a note close to what you asked, the, the, the higher the distance. 
totally forgot something. Sorry. <laughs> so, um, and here we can see that uh, I'm just setting up a, a MIDI file uh, that I have in a folder, just the file name. All right. Sorry. <laughs> so uh, we're going to start coding some stuff together. In that uh, main file, for now we're not doing anything, but ideally we want to calculate the transpose. So the optimal uh, uh, way to transpose our music to our box, and also then draw those new notes on the punch card. So um, I, I have a function called Falcon somewhere that will do this transposition, so, and it will return uh, a modified MIDI. So we will call that Falcon function, we will give the MIDI file and the music box we're using. And then with this modified MIDI, we will uh, call the punch function, the Falcon punch. <laughs> give the base name of our uh, MIDI file, we'll give the modified MIDI so that it can read the notes and the box we're using. And in the end we want to save that modified MIDI in case we want to play it to preview how it will sound on the music box. So we'll just give it a file name and then a code for representing what box we're using. So if I run this it will crash because I didn't implement yet the Falcon function. So if we look here, I already started implementing it. I'm just for now printing some debug stuff uh, using the MIDI file class from Mido, which will uh, then give me a MIDI object. And then I can take the, the tracks property of that MIDI object, which is uh, for each channel, uh, the list of events. I'm only interested in the notes on and note off events. So I, I have a helper function somewhere to give me those lists. And then I call this compute transpose method that is not implemented yet. And what we'll do here is go over all the, um, all the channels, all the, all the nodes, and we're just going to brute force it. We're going to transpose to minus 48, see if it fits, transpose up one, one step, see if it fits. And for each of these attempts, we're going to save the, 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 the distance, and we're, gonna take, we're only going to keep the, the shortest one. So. An empty list to keep the distances. Then we're going to brute force with an arbitrary amount of octaves down and octaves up. First, we need the, uh, the pitch of each uh, event. So the, the, um, the event objects inside the tracks have a note property, which is just an int, and we can do plus key to transpose it up or down. Like uh, Alex did earlier with his plus operator. It's less confusing here. You don't <laughs> have the left plus and the right. <laughs> all right. Then um, for all of these pitches, we're going to calculate the distance. So our box object has a distance method as we saw earlier. So we're going to calculate the distance for all the pitches. And we're going to average them. So this is the sum of all distances divided by the length. And in the end, we're just going to append it to that empty list we made earlier as a tuple that keeps the the score we got and which key we used for that score. In the end, we're just going to uh, keep the best one, so the best distance, and the transpose is equal to the minimum of all the distances, and as a key function, we have a tuple, and we want to take the minimum of the first value, which is the, the distance. Then we can just uh, return the transpose. 
So that will return here. Now we have a transpose value that we think is optimal for this music box and this MIDI track. So now we need to actually do the transposition. And for that, we just iterate on all the nodes. It's important to modify both the nodes on and off, otherwise the MIDI will be a bit weird. Uh, first, we want to ask the music box, hey, which note is closest to this transposed thing? Because it's not guaranteed that we can play them all, even though it's the best distance. And here we will uh, give the um, note value, and then we, this is the actual transposition. We're adding the transpose value. And in the end, we assign it. So this closest method will return the nearest available note on the box. So that should work, famous last words. <laughs> so now if I run my main class, there's an error. Yes, I need to be in my environment, virtual environment to actually have my libraries. And now I have a bunch of debug things and it looks like it did something. <coughs> And if I look at my directory, I have a new MIDI file here now. So if I open the original, here's a sheet music editor. So this is our original uh, MIDI file. We, we heard it earlier. Sounds distant. And now we should have a transposed one. So. It's so, a uh, suffix with GI30, that's the model of my box. And they look similar, but all the notes are higher. So now we have notes that we know will work on our box. Right. Next, we need to draw those notes. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I, we're going to use a library called Pillow, which is the modern version of Pill. And that's a, a thing I didn't know about Pill before doing this slide is that Pill is from 95. So that's one of the earliest Python libraries. And uh, yeah, it's commonly used to open, modify, convert, uh, all that stuff. And it also has an API for drawing. So you can uh, draw circles, lines, text. So that's what we're, what we're going to use to try our best to reproduce those punch cards that came with the, the music box. So I painstakingly had a ruler and I measured all the spacing between the grid, the space between the text and the grid, the arrow. I, I, I have all the measurements. <laughs> and now I step forward. Um, I should have a start of an implementation for punch that by. So this is the measurements all in millimeters. <laughs> Took uh, some time, but it was worth it. <laughs> and here's our drawing function. So we're just creating a new image with uh, an arbitrary size. And for now, we're only like drawing two texts, the title of the MIDI and the model of the music box. So if I run the same, oops, if I run the same thing again, now, we also have uh, um, uh, an image file, so let's open it. Yay, we, we managed to make an image that displays the MIDI title and the, the music box. But there's a long way to go to reach the full product. So this is where uh, the <laughs> subreddit comes into action. I showed you how to draw the, the simple stuff. You just add some small details. <laughs> and, and, and now you should do this. And if we look, our drawing file is now several hundred lines long. <laughs> and let's try to run it again to see what happens. It takes much longer now. And we'll open our file again. Magic. <laughs> so if we print this or we take like an hour, 
and you use this thing to punch all the holes, <laughs> you can reproduce this music on the music box. Okay. So right now we have a tool that works, but it's completely hard-coded. If you want to try another music, you have to go into code, change the value of the file name. If you want more DPI in your drawing or whatever, you need to do the same. So we, we would like to distribute this tool, make it accessible. So we're going to transform it into a tool and not just a program. And for that, we're going to use Click. Click is a very nice uh, Python library for making a uh, command line interface. And uh, Python already ships with a standard library that contains um, uh, methods to parse arguments. Uh, you could manually just parse the sys.rb, good luck. <laughs> you can use rparse, which ships with Python, but it's a lot of boilerplate, uh, a lot of magic behavior. It's doing some guessing to guess if a parameter is an option or a, position, a positional argument, all that stuff. There's docopt, which is fun to try once or twice. It's a very, uh, novel, uh, very novel way to make a, a command line interface. You basically have to know by heart the POSIX standards for how the help menu should look like. And you write a text file with what you would like your help menu to look like, and it will make a parser for you that takes those arguments. <laughs> so it's, it's fun, but uh, I like something more maintainable. And this is where Click comes in. Uh, it works with decorators, so you just have functions, and you add a bunch of decorators. And those decorators will pass you some arguments that you can use in your function. And it supports a whole range of, of things. You have options, arguments, you can group your, you can have groups of commands and subcommands, and they will all have automatically generated help menus. Uh, it's very nifty, I, I recommend trying it. So let's make a basic key. So step forward, and now we have our uh, main uh, function is now just calling that CLI function. And what are we doing in CLI? Uh, I just copy pasted what we had in main, which is uh, calling Falcon, calling punch, and saving the MIDI file. All the parameters are still hard coded. So let's see how click works. Uh, first, you have to decorate your uh, function with click.command to tell click transform this function into a CLI command. And next, we want to uh, extract those hard-coded uh, parameters and make them arguments. So first, we're going to make our uh, DPI configurable. So click, this is an option. Uh, you can give a short name, so mindy. You can give a long name, min min DPI. And you have to tell click uh, what you expect the user to put here. We will say it's an int range because we don't want negative DPI, that doesn't make much sense. Uh, you can give a default. So if the user doesn't specify this argument, make it 300 DPI. Um, you can also give a help uh, string. So when you do your tool min min help for that command, it will show you what does this option mean. Here it means blah blah. <laughs> uh, here's another type of uh, option, we'll call it MIDI. This is for choosing what music box you want to transpose for. Uh, the type of this is the music boxes we define. So we have this music box object. I made three instances for all three models that I know of. So we want to restrict the user choice to that. So I uh, click provides you with a choice class you can use. And I say, just use the keys that are in the boxes dictionary. So the user is now limited to only those. It, it will also show up in the help menu, which is very nice. What else? Um, you can make flags. So if I want the debug uh, <coughs> prints or not. Can I ask something? Yes? If this is an option, shouldn't there be a default? Y your options can be required. I don't want to assume what the user wants as a music box, so if I don't put a required, it will uh, just fail and say, please specify this option. So it's named option, but it's not optional. <laughs> so here we want a verbose option. Uh, the type is, um, no, no type, I just say is flag true. So if the user provides this with no value, it will be true. If it's not provided, it will be false. This is a, an optional option. 
no need or required. Um, and last, we will have an argument. So that's the file name, called mini file. Uh, arguments are different because you don't have those min min, and they're usually positional. And for this one, I want a file. So I could just get, uh, say, type the string, and then manually check does this file exist, uh, and then open it. Instead, I can take, I can tell click. This needs to be a path, and it should exist, otherwise fail. So that, that's very convenient. And here you go. We already have uh, a clip. We just need now to, instead of hard coding this music box here, we will say box because we called our option here min min box. So that's the variable name that click will use and provide to our function. Same with dpi, and then I don't need to hard code it here. Same with the mini file. And then we don't need this anymore. And the verbose. So here. The function dpi reverse the arguments of the... The order doesn't matter. Click. It will just give a dictionary of uh, arguments and expand it. So this should work. So now, if I go back to my terminal, I try to call Falcon. Missing argument, MIDI file. How magic is that? So it automatically generates a help menu, which is POSIX compliant. So you could copy paste this in a text file and use .com. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and we can see our help messages here, blah, blah. We can see the music boxes list is automatically populated. Uh, e even better if I put here uh, um, a doc string, so that's like the Java doc, but for Python, I can put my arguments or whatever. It will use that as the main, uh, oops, as the main, uh, as the main description of my program here. That's the, 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 the documentation I have, and it's all automatic for you. So now I can just use this tool, configure it as I want with any MIDI file, and, and get my output. And as the final demo, if I switch to the next branch. Now I have even more arguments. I filled in all the help um, all the help strings. So that's the final tool that you can find on GitHub. I'll have the link at the end. Now we have all our arguments. Let's run it. So I want the GI30 box. I want it vertically because if I print it, it's nicer if it's already in the correct orientation. I want verbose. Uh, I want super high DPI, 600. I want anti-aliasing <laughs> two times. And then I will just give my MIDI file that we already have it. Ta-da. And now, if I just open my file, it's vertical. It's very high resolution. I could print it no problem. It's even anti-alias, perfect. <laughs> so for the final demo, I use my tool to make this sheet. It took like an hour to punch all of them, but at least I didn't have to transpose manually. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to try and do this. So that you can all see what I'm doing. The microphone, please. And I'm putting the music box on the table because if I do it in the air, there's no resonance and you can't hear anything.
that you see remotely interesting, you don't know what you can learn from it. Um, the web can be a nice source of inspiration. <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter if it's not your original idea, just code it. Don't think too much. If you try to code everything, you don't know what you want to code, so just pick the first thing. Um, try to rotate your libraries, get out of your comfort zone, uh, experiment more. And uh, as many people said, some people say it's Picasso, some say it's others, but I looked it up, nobody knows. Good artists copy, art, um, great artists steal. <laughs> Thank you. So if you want the links uh, that I showed, all the Reddit, all the, the YouTube, uh, the code itself, you can just scan this QR code. I'll leave it here while we have some questions. Thank you very much for your talk. And are there any questions already? Do you know why the music box has some missing bits? So you mean those repeating notes? The D sharp. Oh, they just arbitrarily choose a scale they think fits most music and that's what they produce. They, 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 like they want you to have a lot of notes and they will mostly cover the middle range. So I think most all the notes are, are there, but in the low ones and the high ones, they only put like the most popular, <laughs> whatever that is. <laughs> specific to this tool, but how would you deal with um, multiple instrument channels? Because MIDI can have a lot of different instruments. And how, do you, how do you know which one to pick, or do you just pick all of them? Right now I'm picking all of them. <laughs> so I'm, I'm relying on, on the user of the tool to choose a MIDI file that only has one melody, or use a, a MIDI tool to remove all that's unwanted. It was supposed to be a fun exercise. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> just wondering. Maybe you could do a concert together. <laughs> How long did it take you to build this? The, the tool? Yes. I think it was like a week. <laughs> Any more questions? How about automating the punching process? Like <laughs> that's that's a, an interesting project. I should just code it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I could buy an Arduino and some some motors to like squeeze this thing and scroll the box. <laughs> yeah, it could be an interesting project. Laser cutter. <laughs> 3D print the paper. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe if I generate a, a sheet with only the, the black dots and then put it under a laser, only the black will burn. I hope you'll try it at home and not here. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have laser cutting. Or do we? If there's no more questions, then uh, I would say uh, thank you very much. And there are still some drinks for you.